Dad well recognized that famous statement by Edmund Burke that the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. That's good men and women, please. I will digress here for a moment because somebody asked me the other day in the Constitution, it's actually in the Declaration of Independence, where Thomas Jefferson wrote that all men are created equal. And they asked me, how did I interpret that? And I said, well, from the readings of Jefferson's works that I have done, and the research in digging back, I can only tell you that the use of the word men in that context at that time meant human. It was not a gender. It was a character of a living being, a human being. And that's my interpretation, and I will stand on it, because I believe that is the truth. And I certainly think that if Thomas Jefferson were here today, he would say that is exactly what he intended. Look at the other things that he wrote, if you want to find out more about this great man. Uh, Dad understood this famous statement by Edmund Burke. And now I'd like to recap certain things for you, because I'd like to remind you that education is not the root of all evil, but is the basis on which everything is built. All your knowledge and understanding comes from education, whether you learn it in school because you have a dedicated teacher, or whether you devote your own efforts to educating yourself. <coughs> education is critical to you and your well-being. Integrity, again, that's what you have when no one is looking. Because it's right. Because you believe in it. And that's all you really have. You don't have anything but yourself. So you better have integrity. And when you look in the mirror, you want to be able to smile. Not wonder what in the hell you are. <laughs> and the third thing is focus. I have seen more organizations ruined because they lost their focus than you can imagine. And this is true irrespective of the type of organization involved. They usually deviate from their focus because somebody has an exciting idea or they think something else should be tried. And that may be true, but don't lose your focus. Find out whether or not it can contribute to your focus, whether or not you can incorporate that new idea and make it reinforce your focus. I come out of a marketing background, and we used to apply this to our clients. And again, I'll deviate for one moment because we had a client who was in the leather belting business. Go ahead and stand. I'm sorry. <laughs> in the leather belting business, and they had been very, very successful. They made the leather belting for the overhead drive systems in the mills, many of which were run by water power. And then you had your individual belts that came down to the individual machines and the looms and so forth. Well, they had made an awful lot of money. And the gentleman who started the agency for which I worked told them that they were no longer a leather belting company. and They didn't realize the business they were actually in and they had become a fiduciary institution because they had so much money in the bank. And he told them that they were actually in the power transmission business and that they should consider themselves that way because if they didn't, they were going to lose their business. And they said, oh no, we made a lot of money. We're in the leather belting business. We're going to stay there. He said, I've done everything I can for you. That's the best I can do. Five years later, they were out of business. The V-Bell had put them out of business almost overnight. They lost their focus. They should have realized they were in power transmission and not in leather belt. Organization, get organized. You've even seen <coughs> coffee mugs with the words get organized on them. And 
Don't look at the one that says, tomorrow I must get organized. <laughs> <laughs> Do it today. And the fifth thing is energy. Yes, you do need energy. It takes energy to accomplish anything. We all know that. So, but don't despair. To conclude this, I would like to read you something that Dad wrote when he was 20 years old. To me, it captures exactly what he had, which was an indomitable spirit that never flagged and always stayed the course. If 50 years from now, when I survey the scanty roll of things that I have done, I find a score of visions unfulfilled and victories I dreamed of still unwon. I'll doubtless see mistakes that I have made in places where I lost because I picked the losing side. But not a failure shall I find in the trail I've left behind where I might have won but didn't, just because I never tried. That's my Robert Welch heritage. Thank you for listening, and may God bless each and every one of you.